So I'm Al and I'm the CEO of ZigZag. Uh, ZigZag is a software company uh, and we specialize in returns. Um, returns are an issue for retailers mainly because uh, it takes away a large proportion of their revenue and locks stock um, up where the revenue can't be accessed uh, while, while the goods are off sale. Um, last week there was a, an article in the Times saying that uh, women are the worst offenders. Uh, with a quarter of women admitting to buying uh, stock with the intention of returning. So we're seeing changes in buying behaviour. 60% um, saying that returns policy is actually more important than price. Uh, and um, a similar number saying that uh, returns are actually hurting the business. So it's becoming a huge issue for retailers, particularly in uh, markets like the fashion uh, industry. To give you an idea of the, the size of the problem, uh, returns in certain markets like Germany and India uh, are up to 40%. Um, that's particularly important because India in the next few years is going to overtake China as becoming the most important e-commerce market um, and particularly for, for British retailers uh, who need to export. Uh, they need to consider the cost uh, of recovering uh, goods that have made their way out to places like Germany and India and then have to come all the way back again. Um, Local marketplaces like Amazon, uh, Zalando is another one, uh, and various other ones insist now that retailers have a local returns address. Um, so it's not acceptable for a retailer to be uh, telling the customer to, earn, to return goods all the way back to the UK unless they're willing to foot the bill. So it's imperative now that retailers uh, have local returns addresses. Um, and the way to look at this is if you've got 20% of um, uh, your, your business is a return, uh, then basically 20% of your stock is off sale at any one time. Um, customers, we know, want faster refunds. Uh, and we are seeing that, um, you know, certainly that free or cheap returns increases uh, sales hugely. Uh, I, I saw a stat last week uh, saying that the impact of switching on free, retur free returns put sales up by 32%, whereas returns only went up by about 10%. Um, Dave Elson from Clark's, uh, Clark Shoes, uh, openly admits that his returns coming back from Germany are over 60%, which is huge. So everything uh, that gets sold out there, 60% of it is coming back. Uh, so it's, it's a very expensive problem for retailers to deal with, uh, and that's not the highest stat I've seen. I've seen ASOS uh, citing uh, figures higher than that. Um, retailers, uh, these are some of the top retailers in the UK uh, have got different policies, but uh, a few years ago, uh, it, this, this whole chart would have been filled with no's. Um, and now we've got retailers offering free returns uh, in the UK, more or less by default. There's a, there's a few that don't. Um, but internationally, they struggle to do that. And that, the reason for that is, is the cost of bringing those goods back. Um, we, we're also seeing retailers extending the period in which they offer returns. So it used to be seven days everywhere. We're now seeing 14 uh, by law, in fact, uh, in Europe. Uh, and most retailers are edging towards 30-day policies. Uh, and it's really being driven by Amazon. Um, for retailers, there are various things they can do to uh, cut down uh, the cost of processing returns. Um, but, but I think, uh, first of all, you need to make it easy for your customer uh, to allow them to return a product. Because if they want to return it uh, and you want them as a returning customer, you don't want to uh, put a barrier in the way for them returning that product. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to see a spike in returns by making it easier for a customer. Um, we would encourage retailers to put return or exchange tick boxes on the front of uh, labels, which allow uh, products to make their way back into warehouses and be dealt with quickly. Um, many retailers are not um, filling in um, or pre-filling dispatch notes. So it's still quite a manual process for lots of retailers. They send out a piece of paper in a box. Um, customer has to fill it out. It may not be in the right language. Uh, the customer then has to send that back and somebody's got to key that information, which is not cost effective. So what we're, we're trying to do is push retailers towards um, a digital um, way of filling that into a returns portal where products can be uh, returned uh, and reason co codes are collected uh, across many different languages and then the, the information is uniform. Um, retailers often uh, don't uh, let the customer, uh, basically that the customer is choosing uh, how to send those, those goods back. And if they're not controlling the cost um, 
of, of how that comes back in, then that, that cost will spiral, especially if the, uh, the retailer is responsible in the event that the item is faulty or damaged. Uh, the retailer is uh, responsible for the cost um, of funding that. Um, we would encourage retailers to use uh, the correct language. Uh, all too often products make their way out to places like Russia, for instance. Uh, the goods will actually arrive there and then they'll come all the way back. And the, the simple reason is the postman doesn't speak English. Um, so it's made, made its, its way there. Uh, and then for, for whatever reason, um, hasn't made it through the final mile. Um, and retailers can, can make an easy change there and just, just by employing people to, uh, to try address this before they leave. Um, providing a localised returns address, as I've said, is becoming mandatory on some marketplaces, but it's just a better customer experience to get that uh, product uh, out of the customer's hands and into the retailer's hands uh, more quickly. Uh, and then those goods, when they come in, can be refulfilled from a local warehouse uh, without needing to come all the way back to the UK, for instance. Um, the saving on uh, the carbon footprint point there, um, to give you an idea, a parcel that goes out to Australia um, would travel about 12,000 miles. Um, if it came back, it's another 12,000 miles and then has to potentially even go out to another customer back in Australia again. And that parcel has done 36,000 miles before it's ended up at its final uh, destination. Whereas if you're moving stuff locally, you can cut that, that journey by uh, moving the stuff into Australia um, I, either up front in bulk um, or the single journey and then having a, a returns address in, let's say, Sydney uh, and then back out to a new customer in Adelaide, that journey's cut by about 65%. Um, retailers need to factor in not just the cost of the postage but the cost of uh, the lost business while that stock is off sale because qu quite frequently fashion retailers have got uh, about seven or eight weeks to sell an item before that product drops in value. Uh, so you typically see um, uh, that it goes into sale after that period and it's almost automatically dropped in value. So if it's spent 30% of its, uh, of its life, life cycle in transit, uh, then you've lost an awful lot of the potential value of that product by, by which time it's dropped down uh, a price band or two. Um, retailers should experiment with free versus paid. Uh, so this means that uh, setting thresholds for um, higher value customers uh, so that, that they see uh, different messaging from the lower value customers um, and different products. Um, so if, if it's uh, a frequently returned item, then maybe you wouldn't offer free returns, but if it's a high value customer with a long uh, lifetime value to you, then actually it's probably worth offering that customer a free return. He's not always going to use it. Um, and then reselling the products via marketplaces such as eBay and Amazon. It's not all about eBay and Amazon by any means, and I'm sure Lawrence will cover that next. But um, considering markets you're not already trading into uh, dispose of product, white labeling product uh, with your brand and price points. Um, there are some retailers that are doing some interesting things with returns at the moment. Um, so M&M Direct are actually offering uh, customers uh, the option to purchase a returns label as part of their, uh, their checkout. So they're buying the returns label up front. So they're, um, and that upsell uh, has a very high uptake, but not everybody's actually using the label once they pay for it. So they're, they're monetizing uh, the whole returns process. Um, Amazon are doing something very straightforward, but it's something that not a lot of retailers have started doing yet. Um, and, and it's simply uh, to, well, first of all, refunding uh, automatically on low value items without uh, accepting the goods back, uh, but more interestingly, around exchanges, uh, this bike helmet, for instance, I purchased a few weeks ago, um, was the wrong size. Uh, so Amazon's uh, asking me the reason for the return, uh, if it's too too large or too small, and then quite simply, it asked me, do I want to exchange it for a smaller size? It sounds so basic, uh, and it's what you'd do if you walked into store, but it doesn't translate necessarily onto websites. Uh, at the moment, you know, frequently re retailers are just refunding, refunding where they could be exchanging and making exchange the default option. Um, however, Amazon are banning uh, serial returners. Um, they, they got uh, some bad press just before Christmas uh, for closing down accounts of people who are actually returning more frequently than they'd like. They haven't uh, openly disclosed uh, what the threshold is that they set there. 
but um, certainly some of the, uh, the case studies I looked at were somewhere in the region of between 10 and 20% of purchases, if they were returned by uh, people regularly, then those accounts were being closed uh, for good. Uh, eBay are also controlling the, uh, the way the retailers manage returns by mandating that uh, retailers offer 30-day returns, even though the law is only 14 days, uh, in, in Europe at least. Uh, and they're mandating which couriers you can use um, and which processes you have to follow. Um, so they're kind of setting, setting the benchmark. Um, Jet.com have got a totally different approach. So Jet.com is a US retailer. Um, they've got a huge budget. Um, they, they've got about half a billion um, in just marketing spend alone. Um, but they're actually offering buyers cheaper prices if they will uh, agree their, uh, their, their, their return right uh, gets waived. So if the, if the buyer uh, decides that he, he doesn't want to return the item before he's purchased it, he'll pay less, less money for that product. Um, we've built some uh, returns technology um, that recently won an award at the World Retail Congress um, for innovation. Um, and Zigzag is a returns portal that allows retailers uh, to direct customers uh, to return products to our local warehouses around the world. Uh, we can um, offer intelligent returns addresses uh, that look at the sales of an item. Um, so we're not just saying return everything back to the UK. We might say return it to where the demand for the product is. And then we resell those products in local market to new customers. Uh, We've got warehouses uh, all over Europe, uh, Australia, New Zealand, the US, uh, and instead of sending those goods back, we can uh, deal with that product locally uh, and provide cash recovery. We provide a simple returns portal that can either sit within uh, a re retailer's website or linked from a returns page. Uh, the customer enters their order details, uh, and then we select the items, uh, that the, or the buyer selects the items they'd like to return. Um, they select the reason uh, for the return, so it could be too big, too small, uh, you know, didn't like the colour, whatever. Um, at that point, we're collecting that information and making a decision on what to do with that product based on the product value, on the customer's location, on, on the, uh, the seasonality of the product, uh, and we can make a decision on where that product should be sent to. Uh, so rather than a, a one uh, single address in the UK again, we've got uh, an address that could be local, with, connected with a local courier, uh, and that product then comes back uh, into the uh, supply chain a lot faster. Um, we're able to cut carriage costs. Give you an example: an Australian customer might spend fifteen dollars returning a product from Australia back to the UK. Uh, the cost of doing that from Australia to Australia would be more like five dollars. So it's a huge saving for the saving for the retailer there, uh, and we're able to also look at. Uh, so where, the, where the demand for that product is uh, right now. Uh, once the product comes in, we, we grade the stock. Uh, we look at um, ways of reprocessing it, so it might need rebagging or reboxing, uh, and we can get that supply chain, uh, that product back in the supply chain quickly. Uh, but more importantly, the customer is refunded um, up front, so he, he's not having to wait two or three weeks while that product makes its way back to, to the UK. Um, which really improves the, uh, the customer experience and the retention. Um, we're then able to resell through uh, Pentagon, uh, and the stock, uh, is once it's graded, can recover a much higher value than it would if it had lost that time in transit. Uh, it can also be donated uh, or wholesaled uh, through various different uh, B2B marketplaces. So it could actually be sold through TK Maxx uh, or some other kind of uh, liquidator that would, would deal with the product locally. Um, we provide retailers with a single view of stock so that if a product has come into the warehouse, they can filter and look at their stock across multiple warehouses uh, all around the world, uh, get an idea of uh, how much stock they're sitting on um, and, and what the condition of that stock is. So they can make big decisions uh, on what to do with stock before they've had, uh, decided whether it's worth bringing it back in the first place. Uh, we can also be an outbound warehouse for stock. Uh, so if you've got large quantities of stock that um, are fast moving in certain countries, and if you're pretty much guaranteed you're gonna sell this number of units every month, then it makes more sense to move that product up front and put it into a local market. Uh, and we're expanding 
out into new markets uh, such as China and India later this year. So that's zigzag. <laughs>